Hello everybody, this is Dragon Gamer back to kick off round one for group H of my tournament. No, normally this would be the um, very last group, but because of how many lovely entries I got, it's not. It's the second to last group behind group I, which I'm sure all you patiently people are waiting very patiently to get your tournament bout. But you're still going to have to wait for group H first. And in group, in these match, in this video, if I can get my words out, we are going to see Le Pope taking on Dinosaur Queen 777, Danex Tactile going up against MEJP10, and then Lauren Steele taking on Blood Moon. So without further ado, let's get on with our first matchup. And this is going to be a really intriguing group, Group H. Very, very open. A lot of... Not heavy, heavy hitters, but kind of heavy hitters in here. It's going to be tough for any of them to get out of it. All right, in the red corner for Lepoke, we have an Ambulosaurus. However, it will be at a tight disadvantage because in the blue corner for Dinosaur Queen 777, we have an Alpha Sukumimus. Alpha Sukumimus was one of the dinosaurs I considered using for my tournament. For my team, anyway. <laughs> but nope, I decided to go for the Wild Child, the camera. <laughs> But yeah, this Alpha Super is not to be trifled with. It does have the type advantage over the Ableosaurus, and I suspect it will use it well. Oh, that's a tie. I think tie might favour the Suko there. Oh, that's another tie. Ooh, the Suko gets the first hit. It's an Alpha Dice. Oh, and it's a six. Ablosaurus gonna take a big beat in there. Oh my god, almost died! And the poison as well. Good hit there by Dinosaur Queen. The Futaba Cannon being triggered, as is the Magma Blaster. But we're not gonna see neither because Alpha Dice is gonna come in again, and well it doesn't really matter what it rolls on, it's because the Ablosaurus is going down. And Dinosaur Queen has a 1-0 lead. Bonus points could be a key factor in this group as well, I might point out. But anyway, as for Lepoke's second dino, we have a Sejuanosaurus. An interesting choice here, but I'm sure there's method to the madness. The little, the purple predator that could, the Sejuanosaurus. I think it's revival type? I mean, actually no, it's not, it's not. Ooh, the Sejuanosaurus gets the first hit. The poke finally strike him back. Oh, that's a five. They don't want to see... They, the poke does not want to let that Suko get a crit off, because that crit will do some major damage. Ooh, and they, as will this ACT rocket. It'll do some decent damage. But I wonder, if the Suko is killed before that thing lands, will it ever land? I don't think it will, so can the Suko survive long enough? Oh, it is going to survive long enough. Oh, look at that! All that health gone. Ooh, the Sejuan gets the crit. Is this lethal for Suko? No, it's not. Suko clinging on by a thread. Ooh, it's going to get off a cheeky alpha dice. This alpha Suko Minus is definitely doing the job and it's a five. Is this Sejuanosaurus dead? Oh, it's dead! Well, the Suka Minus has defeated Lepoke's first two dinos, but he's clinging on by a threat. Alright, as for Lepoke's third dinosaur, we have an Apatosaurus, the secret version. An interesting secret dinosaur here, because they, they haven't gone for all secret moves, they've just gone for the one. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this thing is going to fare, and it's going to have to pull its weight here if it wants to get back. If it wants to come, if the poke wants to get back in this match. Well, the Alpha Suko did a lot of work for Dinosaur Queen 777, but it's finally going down, and it's going to get his kneecaps busted up. Well, ankles, I should say. For the douche. Yep, Alpha Sukumimus finally biting the big one. Lepoke pulling it back slightly there, getting off the defense boost as well, which definitely will help. 
Okay, as for Dinosaur Queen's second dinosaur, we have the Super Taurosaurus. The Awaker Mode on three, of course, since I've got me lovely notepad of notes. Dude, that lightning strike is a deadly move for the Taurosaurus to possess. And if it gets it off in the Awaker Mode, I'm pretty sure that even with a defense boost, it will one-shot the Apatosaurus. Oh, that's a tie. Ties probably favor the Taurosaurus, because Dinosaur Queen does have the lead. Ooh, a hit coming from the Taurosaurus. Dinosaur Queen looking strong here. Another hit coming from the Taurosaurus, chipping away at Apatosaurus's health. Twice. But the secret move has been triggered. And that's a tie, though. Another tie, I think. Oh, look at that. The defend Apatosaurus not taking any damage there. Oh, and it gets off a big hit. A big crit coming from Apatosaurus. An arc discharge. Don't get to see this often, do we? The Taurosaurus is going dead. And Lapoke is pu pulling it back here. Yep, Taurosaurus is gone. Defense boost there, which definitely is going to help. Because for Dinosaur Queen's third dino, we have a Sorrow Fagonis. Hmm, interesting, because I know, well, there's a Patasaurus is not lethal type for a start. But I'm pretty sure on the card it says it's recovery type. Hmm, that's interesting, because... I believe tie defense type prevents you from taking damage during consecutive ties, like what was happening. Very interesting. Ooh, it's a tie. Another tie, let's have a look. Yeah, the Apatosaurus is taking no damage. Well, look at this, Lapoke is hanging on by a thread here. Oh, oh, no, never mind. No, never mind. The Apatosaurus died. Well, despite a valiant fight back there by Lapoke, Dinosaur Queen 777 opens her campaign with a win. And unfortunately, the Sorophagnax was above half health, so no losing bonus point for Lapoke, but you get an A for effort. So, yes, a good win there for Dinosaur Queen. As for Lapoke, I'm sure they'll get win I'm sure they'll get wins in this tournament. Just not this time. So yeah, let's move on to our second matchup, which sees which sees Danix Tactile taking on MEJP10. Alrighty then, in the red corner for Danix Tactile, who I will give an honourable shout out to for winning Adolf Adams' tournament not too long ago. A very well deserved win. And will be flying a high of confidence going into this tournament. And will probably be the favourite out of group out of this group, I would say. The favourite to top this group, Danix Tactile, with that Uluru Titan here. In the blue corner, however, we have, for Emi JP10, an Alpha Kentrosaurus. I, I definitely feel like Emi definitely stepped up their game from last time. And can they finally break their losing streak in my tournament and get that elusive win? Well, it would be quite an impressive scalp against Danix Tactile. It would be very impressive. It would be a very impressive scalp if they can pull it off. But Danix Tactile. Confidence is at a sky high. After winning Adolf Adams' this tournament and has never lost a group stage match during one of my tournaments. Ooh, but the Kendrasaurus gets the first hit. It does have the tight disadvantage, I might point out, so this Quake Saber won't do as much damage as it normally would, but it will still do some damage. Oh, look at that, and a tie bomb. Tie bomb as well. Could have done with the poison there. I don't think this guy's poison type, actually. I don't know. I'll have to trouble. We'll find out, won't we? Kentrosaurus getting off a hit. This is a strong start from MEJP10. A good start was needed against Danix Tactile. Ooh, for the Udua Titan gets the hit back. And it's getting off the Nature's Blessing. Good hit there by Danek Staptop. Ooh, but there's the tie. 
There's a tie bombs to kill all of Titan. Emmy has the lead. Alright then, that's for Danex Tactile's second diamond. We have a Yangtronosaurus. Yangtronosaurus is the only Yangtronosaurus in this tournament, which is interesting. And I can't wait to see what it can do. And look at that burning dash. We'll definitely pack a punch this beast. And Danax Tectel's gonna need it and let's get back in this match. Emmy GT10 has started well. Ooh, it's a tie. Tie favour the Yang though, it is charge type. Ooh, but the Kentrosaurus getting the hit is a tie bomb. Well, you can say what you want. This has been an impressive display by MEGT10 so far. Ooh, the Yangtronosaurus getting a much needed hit on the Kentrosaurus there. Oh, that's a tie. The tie bomb's going off. And the Kentrosaurus is finally going down. Tiebreaker coming in there. I don't know if Tiebreaker will carry over onto the next dino. We'll just have to find out. Speaking of next dinos, as for any second dino, we have a Pentaceratops. Again, I definitely feel like any step that they gave this time. And we'll see if it pays off for them. Danix Tactus. Getting slight, getting back into it there. Take, finally taking out the Kentrosaurus, but the Yangchungosaurus did take a beating. Oh, and I think the Yangchungosaurus is dead. It's all going to come down to Danix Tactile's third dino now. Boosh! A water dino, I should point out, so it will be at a... Oh, no, Yangchungosaurus is not dead. Whoa, clinging on by a sliver of health. Oh, not anymore. Pentaceratops finishing the job. Boosh! It's a stomping hammer. Stomping the Yangchungosaurus into the ground and giving an MEGT10 -E a 2 1 lead. However, here is the ace for Danix Tactor, the Brontnikins. And Danix Tactor is in a bit of trouble here. They need, to sort, they need to pull themselves together here. Otherwise, they could be staring down the barrel of their first ever defeat during the group stage of my tournaments, that is. Much needed hit from Brontekins. I think we could see Spectral Armor in this matchup as well. Oh, Brontekins. Damn it, stacked off. Finally putting up a fight. But look at that tight disadvantage there. A killer. Especially when the Pentaceratops gets off a Thunder Driver. This is going to do damage. Slamming Brontekins into the floor. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. And I think any GT10 might have just guaranteed themselves points. Oh, this is perfect. Well, I said this would be quite a shock. If Danix Tactile loses this match. But I think a shock is on the cards. Ooh, a much needed hit there from Brontekins. Danix Tactile not dead and buried yet. Oh, it's a Hydro Cutter. MEJP10 might have just been denied the bonus point. Well, should they win, of course. Yeah, the Pentaceratops is down, but the Brontekins is hanging on by a sliver. Right, as for Emmy's third dino, we have a Super Baryonyx. Well, you got to think this is it for Emmy now. Not going to get a better... They're not get a better chance to win a match in this tournament than right now. So they've got to get this hit. they have got to get this win secured. Yep, yeah, there's the win! The Baryonyx coming in, getting off the Neck Crusher to finish off Brontekins. Well, 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 that is a shock. I did not see that coming. I thought Danix Tactile was going to win this matchup, but MEJP10 
finally breaking their losing streak in my tournament and finally getting their first ever win at my tour during my tournament. And what a start for them. Three big points and that definitely shakes up this group. Right, well that was an intriguing match wasn't it? But on to our final match of this session which a lot of people are looking forward to actually. As we will see Lauren Steele taking on Blood Moon. Alrighty then, in the red corner for our debutant in this tournament, Lauren Steele, we have Super Paris, of course, because she has a fetish for this dinosaur. <laughs> and yes, we're using Zoe, of course, because we got to. Okay, para para! Super para para! Yeah, I'll be intrigued to see how this thing does. You know, it's, it's a solid dinosaur. Could be the MVP for Team Lauren here, and it probably pretty much is. But in the blue corner for Blood Moon, we have a Tyrannosaurus. Blood Moon did reasonably well in the group stage in my last tournament. That's a decent record in the group stage. It's going to be a tough match for Lauren. But I think this could be an important matchup in this group. Given how the first two matches have gone, this could be a good opportunity for one of these two to get a good start. I feel like this group has definitely opened up after those first two matches. But we can talk about that in the end. Ooh, that's a good start from Blood Moon. Getting off the first hit. Just once. Oh, big damage, but the dino stuff is stopping it. That would have probably KO'd Paris, to be honest. I mean, it's a Rex crit, so it would have done an ass ton of damage. How crucial could that be? Well, so far, not very crucial, because Blood Moon gets off another hit. Not doing too much damage, and it's a wait wait time for the para para. Oh, it's a tie! There's the green impulse. Ties do favour para para more because of that green impulse, as I just said. And it does have decent technique, so it has a good chance of getting it off, as you can see there. Although I'm sure Lauren would have much preferred a hit, a proper hit, but you know. Take what you can. Ooh, that's a tie. This could be an important matchup because Lauren's second dino is a wind dinosaur. Ooh, that's another tie. I think the para para is going to go down here. Yep, yeah, there's the crit. And well, this will 100% kill para para. And Blood Moon will have an early lead, but it's not a seismic one. However, it does present an opportunity for Blood Moon to land some major damage on this Carnotaurus. Which will have a tight disadvantage against that T-Rex So, I feel like even though the T-Rex's HP is in the red, and even though this Carnotaurus is attack type, I feel like it's going to need a crit to kill it. Wow, look at that. 2700 is mightily impressive. And it's got the Dino Illusion as well, which definitely could help Lauren get back in the match. I'd be heartbroken if I didn't record this match. <laughs> yeah, I've been looking forward. I've been looking forward to this match. A lot of people in the Discord have been looking forward to this match. So, Ooh, big damage. The T-Rex gets another hit. Oh, this is gonna be big. Even even though it's not a crit. Oh, okay, it's not too bad actually. Oh, last thing this needs to be is a crit. Oh my God, it's a crit! <sighs> Oh, this is Carnotaurus. Carnotaurus is dead. 100% Carnotaurus is dead. Blood Moon's racing into a 2-0 lead. And it's just not happening for Lauren so far. But can she turn it around with this Verasinosaurus? I mean, I hope so, because I want it to be a good matchup. I don't want Blood Moon to just sweep with a T-Rex, for crying out loud. Okay, all secret moves. This fairy will have a good chance. This fairy should take out our T-Rex. I'd be shocked if it didn't. But yes, Blood Moon showing us why he has a good record in the group stage. Well, in my tournaments anyway, because in Adolf Adams' tournament, he kind of sucked. Hey, I think the T-Rex is finally going there. Oh, come on, come on. Are you serious? It got a sliver of health. Oh, it's just... It's, poor Lauren, it's just not happening. And, of course it gets off a Magma Blaster. 
Like, this, this is just overkill at this point. Oh my god, almost killed it! Oh yeah, it's just T-Rex's counter type, so yeah, it makes sense. Alright, the T-Rex is finally dead. But, um, yeah, I think it's safe to say Blood Moon's going to win this match. Right, as for speaking of the devil, we have a Baryonyx. The normal Baryonyx, I think the only normal Barry in this tournament. Actually, might be another one. And yes, a full tilt Baryonyx here, except for no Hydro Cutter, Water Sword instead of Hydro Cutter. So it's a near full tilt Barry. Blood Moon going for the guts here. Oh, that's a tie. If I can ever hit the paper sign. Okay, I think this fairy can tank one more time. Well, no surprise there. No surprise, Blood Moon gets a bonus point win over our tournament debutant, Lauren Steele. Wow. That was really unlucky though. Like, I, that, the fact that that T-Rex survived on a sliver of health and got off a Magma Blaster. Way overkill. Way overkill. But yeah, a good start there from Blood Moon. A bonus point win. And we'll have a look at the table and end the session. Well, I think Group H speaks for itself, to be honest. I don't think... Well, I didn't expect these two to lose their first matches. Well, especially Danix Tactile. So probably the upset of the, the shock of the tournament so far. Danix Tactile losing their opening match against NEJP10. But look at that, Blood Moon topping Group H with our bonus point win. And then we have Dinosaur Queen opening up her campaign with a win as well. So, yes, yeah, that is, it, it's, could be it could be tough for Laura in this group because she's, she's the only newcomer in this group. All these other guys have been in it before. So it's going to be tough, but, you know, Group H definitely opening up with those results. And let's have a look who's playing it. Okay, so MEJP10 will actually be going up against Lauren Steele next and then... Lepoke will take on the Bully Blood Moon. And then Dinosaur Queen 777 will go up against Danix Tactile. Ooh, that could be a good matchup. That's a good matchup there. But yeah, that's group that's round one for group H. So I hope you enjoyed. If you did, stay tuned for next time, where we will conclude round one with group I. And until then, this is Stranger Gamer signing out. <laughs>